As we all know, our users like to work with data frames. But what happens if the data doesn't come in the form of a data frame, but instead is just a bunch of text documents like PDFs? Well, in that case, we have to figure out how to extract information from the text and bring that into a data frame format. And in today's video, I'll show you how that works. So let's dive in. If you watched my other videos, then you know that I like to use the Eleanor package to access AI from within R. And this package is also what we're going to use to work through multiple examples to extract information from text until we can work with PDF files. And as always with the Eleanor package, it all starts with a chat. So let's create one and open a connection to OpenAI. Here we want to throw in a system prompt and we can fill it with anything we like. But here, let's just start with something silly, something like you are an information extractor AI, that's not the silly part yet, but the user will give you a story. We want to feed in a little story into this chat and we want to get information about the story back. Nothing too heavy, just a little example to fool around with. And we want our AI to provide the following information in the response. We want to know what's the main character of the story, what are names of supporting characters, what's the one sentence summary for the story, and also what are the lessons learned from that story. And as you can see here in these brackets here, I've always inserted the thing that the AI should fill in. Something like the name, it's here for the supporting characters, we want a comma separated list of names, and you get the idea we have some other placeholders here too. So let's execute this part here and then we have a chat model. And in there, currently there's nothing but the system chat in it. Now what we need is an actual story to feed into the model. Luckily I created a story about a guy called Dex Ironfist who is apparently a reluctant inventor. And the story is definitely GPT GPT generated. I just wanted to have something to fool around with, so that's why I let GPT generate the story and then save this into a text file that we can then use in R. So the thing that we have to do is to first read the lines and then we see that we get the story here. It's not a particularly nice format, so let's throw this together with the paste function. And then we can see that we have one long text that contains the full story. So let's save this into a variable and then all we have to do is to throw this into the chat method from the chat object. So let's Let's stick in the txt full story in here and execute this. Nice, that worked pretty well and we see here that this format is also the format that we have specified here. But the thing with AI is that we cannot always count on the output format if we just specify it in a prompt like that. And for these kind of scenarios where we want to have a very specific output format and rely on it, we can use the extract data method instead of the chat method from the element chat object. And to do that, we have to first create a new chat. So let's copy and paste this part here. And then let's get rid of the specification here because we don't need that here. And we can also say that it should provide information from the story. In this prompt, we don't have to specify the format yet. Instead, we can define the output structure using type functions that we have seen in a previous video of the series. Here, we want to first define a new object. And as part of the object, we want to throw in the things that we are interested in. So let's say the main name should be a string that we're looking for. And the description for that is just the name of the main character. Similarly, we want to get the name of supporting character. Characters. Here's where we throw in that we want to have names of supporting characters as a comma separated list. And then we do the same thing for the summary as well as for the lesson learned. And with this output structure, we can use the chat object and there use the extract data method. And into this, we first throw in the text from before. And then we specify that the type should be the type that we've just specified, namely the type object. And then if we execute this, we see that we don't get text back, but instead we get a list back. Back. And in case you're wondering, well, how do I get this data then? You can just from the chat object use the last turn method and in there specify that you want to get the last result from the assistant. And if you execute this, you see that you get this whole turn object back and you see that inside of contents way down here, you see that here is the list that we are looking for. So we use this add symbol to look into the contents and then we have this content JSON here. This is a list of one. So we first have to go into the first object and then in there we want to dive into the value and there we want to dive into the wrapper. Just make sure that you always use the dollar or add sign as needed. And that way you have your list here. And this thing can be thrown into the as tibble function 
and then you see that you have a one row table. So that's how you can turn a regular text file into a structured data frame. But let's try to make our example a little bit more interesting. Let's try to run a named entity recognition. This is a common task that you will try to do in text data analysis. And here we want to practice this on our little story. The idea is pretty simple. Just like we've defined the output structure here, we can define a different output structure that fits to our named entity recognition task. So let's scroll to our new code chunk. And here here we can create a new object and this time let's call it a named entity that was found in our story that's the description of this object and we're looking for a name that will be of type string and the description of that is the name of the entity that way the llm the ai will know what should go in there and then we're looking for a description of that entity which is yet another string which is the one sentence description of that entity and what we can do now is save this into a new variable that we call type entity this naming will fit a little bit better into the naming scheme of the elmer functions so let's execute this part here and then we can copy our code from before but this time i don't want to stick in our type entity into this type here but this time i want to make sure that i'm not looking only for one named entity this would be the case if i were to throw in type entity just as is instead i want to look for all possible named entities in our story so that's why i wrap a type array around that and in the items argument of this function i can then throw in the type entity so i'm looking for an array or a vector of entities and entities are defined by my own definition here so let's execute this now and see what the results will give us so here we've seen that the ai found three named entities namely dex iron fist rin and automaton so just like we did before let's try to get our data manually so let's check out what we will get if we use our complicated mix of add signs dollar signs and brackets here then we'll get a list that has multiple rows here and if you were to throw this into s tibble then you'll see that this doesn't work because s tibble needs a kind of column wise layout and we don't have that here we have a row wise layout here so that's why we throw this to the bind rows function and that way we'll get a tibble with all the rows bound together nice that worked pretty great but let's try to make our example even more interesting let's try to extract very specific categories for example our entities could fall into to the categories protagonist antagonist and others and the way to do that is to just extend our type here and here we can call this type and in there we need to specify that we want to have a categorical variable in r this will typically be called a factor variable but the naming here is closer to what other programming languages use and these languages typically use enum so that's why we need a type enum and then just like with the other types we can throw in a description and the values that we want to have as part of the category reset here and then if we re-execute everything here we'll see that we have another column inside of our list so here we see that we have a new column called type and we can make this into a table once again and that way we can read it a little bit nicer so the nice thing here is that inside of this column i can now expect to have only protagonist antagonist or other in there and i cannot stress how nice this is this is a neat feature for all kinds of classification tasks all right i've promised you to work with pdfs so let's do that as well for this purpose i've grabbed the little invoice from the interwebs and our task now is to extract all the invoice positions that are listed and the way we want to achieve this is to use a similar strategy as this but first we need to get the text that is embedded in the pdf into r and for that we're going to use the pdf tools package so let's create a new code chunk and then let's load the pdf tools package and with this package it's really easy all we have to do is to call the pdf text function and then refer to our invoice and if we execute this we see here that we have all of our text in here now which does look like a mess but that's no problem at all for us the ai can handle this all we have to do is to first save this into a variable for later and then we can define a new type for an invoice position which is a type object and this will be a single invoice position and there we can now specify properties of this object and let's just throw in simple stuff like the position which is just a string or a description of the position then the quantity which should be a number and then we also add a rate for the price per piece or the hourly rate in case we have a different kind of invoice we also want to throw in the total which is also just a number 
number. And then we also want to throw in an enum to make sure that we know what the currency is. Here, let's just describe that we want to have the currency of that particular position. And then we throw in values that are of interest to us, possibly US dollar or Euro or something else. And with that, we can create a new chat object that is tailored to our specific use case of invoice extraction. So we modify the system prompt to say that it is an invoice extraction assistant and will provide the text from an invoice and it will give back every position from it. And with that object, we can just call the extract data method again. And there we throw in the text we have just extracted and specify the type, which should once again be an array to not only include one invoice position, but multiple ones. And so we describe this array as a list of all available invoices. And then we specify the items according to the type we have just defined. Probably this should be invoice positions. Probably a much better description. And now if we execute all of this, we see that we get our data back here. And if we take our code from before, we can also see that the formatting in terms of numbers and characters are also working perfectly. So this is a neat trick to extract information from PDFs without having to worry about how to parse weird texts like this. I mean, it is technically possible, but it's just more effort to do so. With that, you should have an overview of how to use Elmer to extract data from text. Feel free to drop any questions into the comments if you have them, or if you'd like, you can just let me know if you like this video or not. I'm always happy to hear from you. And if you want to see more AI videos, you might want to check out this playlist here, or if you're looking for some other R content, you can try this playlist here. And now all that's left to say is thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.